All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our talk. We're excited to be at the first KubeCon China today to talk to you about building containers faster with Jib, which is a containers builder we built for Java applications. So who are we? Uh, we're a Java team out of Google New York. We focus on developer tools. My name is Apu. I'm Q. And our team's current focus is on helping the Java developer experience on Kubernetes and Docker. So many of you are already familiar with containers, which allow you to say, take your traditional monolithic Java application and split up into microservices to orchestrate on a container orchestration platform like Kubernetes. And Java developers are already familiar with building jars. Containers are sort of the same concept. The idea behind jars, the idea behind Java is very similar to the idea behind containers, which is the idea of write once, run anywhere. However, building containers for Java applications can be quite a confusing and tricky process. To see kind of how confusing and tricky that can be, let's um, start off with a story about a Java developer, an experienced Java developer, who's taking a stab at building a container image for their Java application. All right, so let's say I'm a Java developer and I'm building a website for Peclink. I want to containerize my backend, my Java backend, and I want my container image to be on my registry at ilovejava.io slash peclinic app. So what do I do first? Well, I go and I search build Java Docker image. Or I go to Baidu and I search go xian Java xing xiang. And then I read the top few tutorials, and I'm able to write this Docker file. Hmm, OK. So I run Docker build on this, but it takes a very long time to actually do the build. So this is a, a, a pretty complex Docker file. There's a lot going on here. You have to, looks like, install some Python packages. You accept and install the, or you accept the license for and install the Oracle uh, Java 8 JDK. Then you install Maven, you add your source code in, you do your build inside your container, and then you, can you tell your container how to run your application. However, Docker's come a long way from this, and there must be a simpler way to do this. Mm, OK, so I read some more tutorials, and I'm able to write this much better doc file. I'm using a well-maintained base image off of Dog Hub, the open JDK base image. And all I'm doing is I'm copying my fat jar into my container image and setting my entry point to run that fat jar. So this is a lot simpler, a lot fewer layers, a lot more readable. Yeah, so this is great. It is a lot easier to read. For someone looking at this, it's very obvious what's happening. However, when I did this build on my sh machine, I found out my container image was 300 megabytes. And that's really a lot for just simple Java application. Hmm, OK, so I do some searching, and I find that the OpenJDK base image is 284 megabytes by itself, which is huge, making my entire image over 300 megabytes. So I do some more searching, and I find that I can use the Alpine version of OpenJDK. Alpine is a tiny Linux distribution, which by itself is only about 4 megabytes, and I'm also just using the JRE version. So this base image is only 82 megabytes, making my entire image a lot smaller. All right, it seems that when I do the build, it still takes a while to run. So for those of you familiar with doing Docker builds, at the beginning, you'll see a message like sending Docker context to Docker daemon. And what that means, it's sending all the files your Docker daemon needs to do your Docker build. And in this case, or the default case, it's all the files in the directory where your Docker file is. And that could contain any number of files, including things you don't need at all. In this case, we only need our jar, because um, that's the only thing we're copying over. and Really, we should take a look at Docker best practices to see if there's a way to help us to help ourselves out. Hmm, Docker file best practices. So I search Docker file best practices, and I find the official Docker file best practices. And that's a lot of best practices. In there, I see something about a Docker ignore file. So I do tutorials on Docker ignore files, and I'm able to write this Docker ignore file. It ignores everything in my project directory except for the fat jar that I want to copy into my container image. So now. My build runs a lot faster. I do Docker push. But it seems that even if I just change a single line of code, it still takes a while to do the push. So you remember in our Docker file, we had a single line for our whole application. So every time you change anything in your application, you have to rebuild the jar, put it in your container, and send that container over to container registry. But Docker has a thing called layers. And maybe there's a way we can split our application into separate layers so we focus all our changes in a single layer. Mm, OK, Docker layering. So I do some tutorials on Docker layering, and I'm able to write this better Docker file. 
I split my application into two layers, one for my dependency jars and one for my class files. This way, when I only change my class files, the only layer that I need to resend is the class layer and not the usually much larger dependencies layer. So now my build runs a lot faster. I can do iterative development. I think I'm good to go, right? Yeah, uh, you can see the first line here that um, if we change a dependency, we have to run a special Maven command to copy those de dependencies into our target directory. Maybe we can orchestrate everything from Maven. Hmm, okay, so I do some more searching and I find that there's Maven plugins I could use to define my Docker build within my Maven POM XML. So I saw my Docker file, I apply this Maven plugin, and now I can run my Docker build from Maven. I could do all my development with Maven commands. Great, I think I'm good to go. So that was a pretty long process to get from writing our first very naive Docker file to where, uh, at the end, where we had a Maven plugin. You, we reduced the image size, we removed all the install commands um, by using a better base image, we added a Docker ignore file to limit the initialization cost of the build, and we split our application up into layers to improve incremental build times. Um, there's a couple more issues with Docker when, that you have to be aware of when using Docker. First of all, you have to download and install Docker, and then the order of your layers affects your cache hits. You can use multi-stage Docker builds to separate the build part of your Docker build from the uh, container, I mean, from the part that containerizes your application. There's other doc cache mechanisms and quirks that you might want to be aware of if you truly want to understand your Docker build. Finally, a problem we all have is you have to have elevated privileges or root to run the Docker daemon. Um, if you're concerned about your Docker build, um, you, there's some tips and tricks by our colleague Ray at this link here. We'll have this at the end, but we're not, oh, sorry. <laughs> So when containerizes Docker, there's many steps that exist between your project and your container image actually existing on your registry. You have to build your jar, you have to write your Docker file, you have to send that along with your jar via the Docker client to the Docker daemon, and the Docker daemon has to run a container in order to build a container image, and then Docker push pushes it to a registry. However, we're all Java developers, and we don't want to have to care about Docker files. The containerization process should be as simple as having a project running some build and just having your container image be on your registry. So that's why we build JIB. We build JIB as plugins for Maven and Gradle so that you can containerize an existing Maven or Gradle project in two easy steps. Just apply the plugin and run your build. All right, we're gonna do a live demo. So we're actually gonna use the, uh, the Spring Peclin example. <laughs> Off of uh, just off of GitHub, I would just like, clone it and directly containerize it with JIB. Cloning the Spring Tech Clinic sample app. Internet. Hello. Yeah, so Spring Tech Clinic is a classic sample app. Uh, you run as a server and it serves up essentially a, a, a pet clinic with pets and veterinarians. All right, so we got the, uh, the repo cloned and all we're gonna do is we're gonna run JIP directly on here. So we're gonna fully qualify it so that it even knows where to find it. I'm gonna use version 010 and we're gonna call the build goal. And I'm gonna say where we want the image to go and I'm gonna use my Docker Hub registry. And I'm going to tell it to use a different base image other than distrolist, which is the default, because uh, we can't access that from here. So I'm going to use the open JDK image that we just talked about. So this is going to start the Maven build. It's going to do a compilation of the Spring Planet Clinic project. And then after it compiles, it'll run the JIP Maven plugin to containerize that into a container image that will be on my Docker registry. Uh, once that finishes, uh, it's actually supposed to shut down my Docker daemon to show that it doesn't actually use a Docker daemon to do that. But uh, we're gonna actually take this image, and there's a website called playwithdocker.com. You can go and launch an instance and just run Docker images off the Docker Hub. We're going to start a new instance. 
the starting. All right, I'm going to use my uh, local document to run this. So I'll pull this. And then uh, once that's pulled, I'll just run it. Port forward, port 8080. And uh, we have our pet clinic option that was containerized jib starting up from the container that we just built. Now we can go, say, go to localhost 8080. And we have our application accessible. Cool. So uh, in that demo you saw, we took a project, um, we did a jib build, and we ended up with a container image on the container registry. We didn't, we didn't need to use Docker um, for this build, and that's what we want jib to be used primarily for. However, some of you might still have some Docker infrastructure. So if you want to build to a Docker daemon, jib gives you the option of building to that Docker daemon. You can also export a Docker context, which would be a Docker file with all the accompanying application files, um, and we'll export that into a directory, and you can run the Docker build there yourself, or you can inspect that directory to kind of see what's going on. But if you want to extend your configuration, maybe some more advanced configuration, you can set JVM flags on, um, for your application. You can set how JIB chooses your credentials. You can add labels to your container config. You can add environment variables. You can even add extra non-application files that you want to be packaged with your application. All right, so now we're going to do another demo, and uh, this time we're going to containerize a Micronaut application that's partially in Groovy, and we're going to containerize using the JIP Gradle plugin. Oh. Containerizing directly to a Docker daemon this time. Yeah, so instead of going to a container registry, as we did in the previous demo, we're going to clone it and run jib docker build, which will build directly to the docker daemon that I'm running. So it's compiling, compiling Ruby, and then now it's running the jib gradle plugin to containerize, and we're done. All right. So we take this application, and we can just show you uh, running it. Uh, expose for 880 again. And once that's started up, we can just curl the application. Endpoint is hello. It'll say us hello world back. Cool. So of course, JIP can containerize other JVM language besides just Java. So in those two demos, the JIP containerization happened as part of your build. And we really want JIP to feel like a compiler for containers. Um, when normally you're using Dockerfile, it feels like a script. You pick where your image comes from. Um, what commands to run to install dependencies. You can copy your uh, application files over or an application jar and maybe do your build on the container if you want and then you configure the entry point. That's because Docker is a language agnostic general purpose build tool. But it knows nothing about your Java application. Um, but since JIB is integrated into your build system, it can infer what it needs from Maven and Gradle to do containerization as part of your build. And historically, you've had code, and you've had a compiler, and you use those two to create an executable. Uh, for a containerizer, you would just want to do the same thing. You want to take your Java code and turn it into a container. And that's kind of because we want to consider containers as your executable unit of the cloud. Um, so we've already kind of done this with jars. You know, you, with Java, you take your um, application files and you jar it up, and that can include your dependencies in like a fat jar. And similarly, JIB acts on your Java code in the same way. It packages it up with its dependencies and puts it in a container. So let's talk about, uh, let's explore a little how JIB works. So when we were developing JIB, we kept a few goals in mind. First, we want JIB to be purely in Java so that you can run JIB with nothing but just your Maven or Gradle build systems. We also want JIB to be optimized for Java applications so that you can have fast rebuilds and fast development iteration cycles. And we also want JIB to be able to build images reproducibly. So we implemented JIB purely in Java so that it can run as plugins for Maven and Gradle. So with JIB, you don't need to install Docker 
or need root privileges to run a Docker daemon, and you're not running a container in order to build a container. So how do we achieve this? Well, first, it helps to understand what a container image is. A container image is just a directory of files. And in the Docker image format, this directory of files is split up into layers, each represented as tarballs. And these tarballs compose into the actual file system for the container image. And then in this format, there's also the container configuration, including things such as entry point, volume mounts, health checks, things for when you're actually running the container. So for example, this is a container configuration. You have the checksums of the layers, as well as here we have an entry point set, which is the command that's run when the container image is run. And then in this format, there's also a manifest, which wraps everything up, the layers and the container configuration. This is an example of manifest. You have the unique identifiers of the layers and the container configuration, which are all checksums. And as by default, the JIP image is built on top of the Distrolist Java image. Distrolist is a set of language-focused base images for languages such as Java, Python, Go. And these images don't include anything but what, just what is necessary for running your application. So compare this to Alpine, for example, which is a popular base image recommended by Docker. Alpine is still a Linux distribution. It's just a tiny Linux distribution. Distrolist, on the other hand, doesn't include package managers, shells, or any other unnecessary programs. So this helps to improve security by reducing possible attack surfaces, helps keep your container images as minimal as possible. And this is really what a container image should be. It should be just your application and its runtime dependencies. And if you want to learn more about Distrolist, there's a great talk that's linked to you in the Distrolist repository. So speed. So if we're trying to replace your Docker build with a JIB build, we want JIB to be faster or at least as fast as your previous Docker build. And um, to understand what's going on, it's first important to understand how Docker builds happen. When you do a build, uh, it creates a container image with multiple layers. In this case, you have a 100 megabyte layer and a 50 megabyte layer. And when you do a Docker push, it pushes these layers to your remote uh, container registry. And it'll send over 100 megabyte layers, send over 50 megabyte layer. But um, Docker builds and container registries are smart. When you make a change to one layer, let's say the 50 megabyte layer, uh, it already knows the 100 megabyte layer exists and it's cached, and it only needs to change, or it only needs to send over the changed layer, so in this case, the 50 megabyte layer. But smart developers can take advantage of this and split their application into multiple parts, and they can focus their changes on the small layers that change the most. So let's say here we have a one megabyte layer, we change it, it only needs to send up the changed layer, so the amount of data going over the wire is small, and that improves your build times. JIB takes advantage of this. If you see here, this is a Docker build that we would expect Java developers to use. It splits your application into dependencies, resources, and classes. So if you change uh, a class file, it only resends your classes uh, layer. And for many Java applications, the dependencies and resources layer can be pretty heavy. Uh, JIB does a build that's like this, except we don't use Docker files. So um, there's other advantages of using JIB. When you containerize with Docker, since it's general purpose, each layer that's being built might have a dependency on the previous layer that was built. So building in Docker has to happen sequentially. Once all the layers are built, all the pushes can happen in parallel, um, and Docker takes advantage of that. But when you're containerizing with JIB, since it's a highly controlled environment, each layer is built independently and pushed independently, so you paralyze the whole process and you can reduce your total build time. Um, since JIB also splits your application into multiple layers, you can take advantage of caching pretty easily because it happens automatically for you. Um, here's a small kind of uh, example of build speedup that JIB can provide you. We have two projects here. The orange one is built with JIB, uh, just all default config, and the Docker build happens, uh, it's a pretty simple Docker build with a single fat jar that contains your application and its dependencies. As you see here, the first builds are pretty similar. They're both around 20 seconds. And that's because both JIB and Docker have to push your whole application over to the remote registry. And then when you rebuild without changes, they're both pretty fast as they basically go through the process of figuring out that nothing has changed, so no build needs to be done. Um, the real advantage of JIB here is that when it automatically um, splits your application up, and you make a change into your classes files, JIB is only pushing your classes layer. 
And you can see here the difference between pushing a small layer on your whole application is between 5 and 15 seconds for a 20 megabyte application. However, when you get to a very large project, or somewhat large project, 120 megabytes, you can see rebuilding just your classes is still pretty fast, whereas rebuilding and pushing your whole application can take up to 35 seconds in this example. And that means you're sitting around waiting at your computer for your build to complete. So another benefit we get out of a custom image builder like JIP is the ability to build images reproducibly. So what does reproducibility mean? Reproducibility means that the same image, same code always produces the same image. So for example, if you were to make a change and commit that to say your version control system, that commit should produce the same image on your machine as your teammate's machine, as your production machine, or your CIC system. And what this helps you do is reduce possible variations that could occur in a production build that you can't reproduce in a local development build. And how do we guarantee reproducibility? Well, we just wipe all the metadata that could vary between builds, such as timestamps, user IDs, and groups. So uh, because JIB is built into your uh, build system, maybe in Gradle, there are other possibilities for a container compiler that we'd like to explore that are not yet in JIB. We can perhaps do smarter inferences, like expose a port automatically when we detect your application is listening on that port. We can do other container optimizations for memory and CPU based on your application. We can try and organize your build into logical groups of code that change together so uh, the layers are smaller and your builds are faster. And then finally, we can try and take advantage of JLink and modules to produce smaller container images for you by reducing the size of your JRE. And these are all tools for building the container. We want to work on tools for running the container now that your container is built. And Q will now talk about um, some work we're doing on Scaffold for the Java development experience on Kubernetes. So we originally gave this talk back in May, but since then we've made a lot of progress and we made a lot of integrations with other tools. And one that's great we built was integration with Scaffold. And so Scaffold is a command line tool for doing continuous development on Kubernetes. And specifically, it's for being able to develop and iterate directly within a Kubernetes cluster. So Scaffold handles various aspects of the development workflow, like building container images, pushing them to a registry, and deploying your application upon every single change. So it propagates that change to your running cluster. So let's take a look at the scaffold development process. So in this diagram, you see there's stuff in blue, which is usually your inputs, uh, like your code and your Kubernetes config. And it goes through this whole process, and you get, in orange, your application running on your cluster. And this development process is building your application, containerizing it, pushing it to a remote registry, and then if you've changed the version, you need to update your Kubernetes config to correctly reference that version. You then push this config to your container cluster, or to, sorry, to your cluster, and then the cluster deploys some pods. You can run some commands to uh, tail logs or to port forward so you can access your um, running application from your computer. And then finally, your application is up and running and you can evaluate it. And every time you make a change, you have to go through this whole process. And Kubernetes is about removing all the stuff you don't care about and only concentrating on what you do care about. What we care about here is our code and our config and our running application. And that's kind of where Scaffold steps in. Scaffold takes everything out of the middle, sits there, and does everything for you. All right, let's do a live demo of using Scaffold with JIP as the builder part. My demo folder. I can find it again. I think it's in demos. Yeah, there we go. All right, so here we have a repo, a uh, directory set up with scaffold, and all that needs to be done to sub scaffold is to have a scaffold YAML. Let's see if make this bigger. So here the scaffold YAML is compared with one artifact just for the app that we have, and it's going to containerize to a uh, Docker Hub registry. And the context just says the app is in the app directory. Uh, we have it configured with the JIP Gradle builder to tell Scaffold to use JIP Gradle plugin to actually containerize our application. So our application is just a simple Jetty server. And I'll show you the code for it. It's just one hello class that just serves a page that says hello with some uh, demo word that comes from environmental and uh, from Shanghai. So what we're going to do is we're going to just run Scaffold Dev, and this is going to launch Scaffold with the uh, continuous development iteration cycle that it manages. 
And we're actually just uh, using a local Kubernetes cluster on Docker for desktop. So this containerizer, our application, and then Scaffold is gonna try to figure out a unique image ID for it using the git commit and the image digest. And then it's gonna try and redeploy the Kubernetes YAML that we had to the cluster with the exact image that we just built. Oh no, see how handshake, time out. All right, let's see if uh, I just. <laughs> Docker Hub down. <laughs> See if we can access Docker Hub. We cannot access Docker Hub. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're gonna do some. So you can also have scaffold. Okay. We're gonna ha tell it to actually use our Docker daemon, and let's see if it works, because uh, I've not tried this part of demo. So we're gonna go and edit our scaffold YAML, and I'm just gonna tell it to not push the image. And we're gonna do a scaffold dev again. Uh, still using a Docker hub image. Hmm. Yeah, it's not going to be all. Uh, is the VPN going to carry over? It? Oh, it, done. All right, it worked. Right. Docker is back up, probably. Uh, all right, so the server started, and we can go and hit the server, uh, localhost 8080. You see, hello, everyone from Shanghai. So we're gonna say uh, we wanna make a change, we wanna change what it says, and we actually I go back to the... And we're gonna change what it says. So app, source, main Java, and instead of, let's say, Shanghai, we're gonna, uh, from, from China. It's, visible. it's in the bottom right corner. <laughs> So once we save that, Scaffold is gonna pick that up automatically and recontainerize our application and repropagate that change directly to our Kubernetes cluster. So it's gonna recontainerize. All right. And then redeploy our application. And once that's up, we can curl the application again. And we have, hello everyone from China. Now let's say we wanna change that environment or the demo word that we had. So we go and edit our Kubernetes YAML, and this is just a uh, standard deployment, and instead of everyone, we'll uh, change it to, hello, the audience. All right. <laughs> also, another word for everyone. So we save that, and Scaffold's gonna pick that up, and it knows that it only needs to redeploy the Kubernetes YAML, so it's already back up and running. So if we curl again, we see a hello audience from China. Cool, so that's showing Scaffold. Of course, you can use multiple artifacts in multiple languages. You can mix and match Java with you know, Node.js and other languages as well. All right. Let's see. see how much time we have. Oh, we have time. So, something else that we built uh, and recently is a Java library for building containers called Jib Core. And this is actually the library that powers Jib Maven plugin, Jib Gradle plugin. And we built and released that as its own library for use in Java. So how do you actually use this? This is an example. So it, the first line takes uh, the busy box and uses it as the base image. Then we just, so this example is actually containerizing a Hello World application. And the second layer just adds one layer with a shell script that says hello world to the root of the container image. And then we're just setting an entry point to run that shell script and telling it to containerize to our Docker daemon and call it test jib core. So we can actually sh let's show a demo of this jib core library. Oh, another thing about scaffold is that it also cleans up your application when you uh, exit from it. I go to my temporary directory, to my downloads folder, clone this repo, 
And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it, run the application with Maven exec. It's going to execute the uh, application. Oh, let me first uh, show what the application actually is. So source, main, and it's just the same code we had in the slides. Back again. And it's going to use the JIP core library to containerize our hello world container directly to our Docker daemon. All right, so it's done, and we can just go and run it. Test JIP core was what we called it. And we have hello world. Of course, we can change that. We can say change the shell script that we want to add in and change world to uh, Shanghai. And we can run it again. And so we containerize our application. And once it's done, we can run it again. I'll say hello Shanghai. And yeah, so you can use this library to uh, do whatever you want with building containers in Java. It's a general purpose library for building containers. It's not just for building Java containers. Cool, so that was JibCore. And of course, there's many other things that we didn't cover. We uh, recently released version 010 with support for wars. So you can take a war project and just containerize it with Jib with barely any configuration. And we also built integration with Knative, which is another project out of Google, serverless modules for serving, eventing, building, and Jib is one of the build templates you can use. There's also a third party uh, plugin for the Scala build tool, SD plugin. It's not an official part of the project, but if you use an SPT, you can use this plugin. And we also have integration with JHipster to use Jib for their server generator. Oh, so uh, what does the future hold? Um, at Google, we're getting the language teams together to bring Jib to other languages. Um, so if maybe in the future, you can use a style of builder like Jib for Node or C Sharp or Ruby. Uh, we want to work on more scaffold integration, maybe um, integrating debug directly into your scaffold process. And finally, we want to see where people or we can take Jib core is really letting the developer focus on writing their code and having all the cluster related build and deploy be automatic and just disconnected from the developer. Um, so that's our talk. Uh, this is the GitHub page for Jib. You can go there for documentation or if you want to file an issue. Uh, there's a couple links below for scaffold and distroless and uh, some Docker build tips and tricks. So we have a couple minutes for questions. Um, or restaurant recommendations in Shanghai. Yeah. So there is a JIP doesn't support Bazelbo because it's just Maven or Gradle plugins. Uh, but there's actually a Bazel um, rules rules uh, rules Docker, I believe is what's called. You can find it on the Google Cloud Platform org, and it's rules you can use to actually build Docker images in Bazel. Uh, scaffold also supports Bazel out of the box. So if you want to use Scaffold with Bazel, you can. Cool. All right. Well, we'll probably also be at the Google Boost later if you have more questions. We'll also be outside right after this. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thanks.